What's up guys? Welcome back. For those of you guys who don't know, Fat Shark just released a starter kit for getting into drone racing. It's really intimidating at first for a lot of people. There's just a lot of knowledge out there of like where to get parts and how to assemble it. I do this pretty much professionally at this point and I still don't know most of what's out there. So Fat Shark decided to release the 101 kit, which is basically the radio, goggles, a little tiny brush drone, spare battery, and spare finger propellers. It's basically just designed to be a super easy way. You get the kit, everything's already bound and ready to roll. So to test how easy it is, we have my roommate, Mike. Hello. He basically has, I think at this point, maybe 30 to 45 minutes of training in the simulator, and that's it. So he's never actually flown a real drone. He can turn left and right, I believe, sometimes, occasionally. So we're gonna see if we can get him to take all the parts come with the kit and get this guy up in the air and flying and see how easy it is to fly. See if you can figure out how to get this guy on and working. All right. Uh, Got to guess it's the power to think about. That would okay. be correct. We got lights. Radio on. Boom, power switch. Still black in there. Oh, no, now it's static. All right, well, it'll be static until that guy gets powered on. And this is the battery, right? Yep, the battery is underslung underneath it. And yeah, you got it. You just plug the balance lead looking thing right into the back of the battery and it's good to go. Everything's on. We have video, yes. You cannot wear glasses with these goggles, which we figured out the hard way. So as Mike's flying this guy, since it's transmitting on an analog FPV thing, and Mike is Stephen Hawking over there, <laughs> um, I can use my goggles, which are the Fat Shark HDV3s, to pick up his video signal, and I'm actually going to DVR on here so you guys can see what he's seeing. All right, got alarmed. Oh, no, not enough power. Oh, we probably should have seen that. Oh. oh. There we go. There you go. Okay, well you got it off the table. That's a good start. Oh, that's start. Johnny FPV feature. So if you haven't noticed yet, wait, hold on. Here, now you can see okay. me. Okay, okay. So if you haven't noticed yet, this guy is a brushed quad for you guys who don't know what that is. Basically just means uh, it uses brushed motors rather than brushless. A lot of the setups that I fly, um, pretty much a standard setup uses brushless motors which are more powerful and more efficient, but they're more expensive, a little more complex for a starter kit. This guy uses brush motors. They're less powerful. They don't last necessarily as long. They're super duper cheap, really quick and easy to replace. They aren't that powerful, which sometimes is better for someone who's like really new into flying because having too much power can sometimes make it extremely difficult to learn how to fly and like maintain altitude and stuff like that. Yep, let's try it again. All right, I'm probably gonna hit you here for a while. Oh no, I'm just gonna nearly hit myself. So. So you got an arm, you're able to get it up. Mm -hmm. It's a little squirrely in here. Also, it's in angle mode, which is not what you flew in the simulator okay. at all. It also has much less power than what you flew in the simulator. Okay. And you're also flying inside of an apartment living room rather than in the middle of downtown city. Okay. So there's two auxiliary switches. The one above the pitch and roll is for arming. And the other one is your mode switch. So all the way up is uh, attitude mode. In the middle is a stronger attitude or horizon mode, and the very bottom is rate mode. In rate mode, outdoors, it's pretty nice. Um, indoors, I really like to prefer flying attitude mode. Super easy, especially for like really tiny areas. Um, but you can actually go in, there's a USB port on the top behind the shark fin, and it's just got beta flight on it. You go in, change your rates, change the modes, whatever you want to do. And the radio also just uses a FlySky protocol, so any FlySky receiver can be used with this radio. So yeah, I mean, for someone who's never flown before, is able to at least get it on, get the radio on, get the goggles going, and the goggles, I believe, auto sync up to the channel on here, uh, or at least the default channel, here's the default channel on the goggles. You can change the channels on the goggle using the button on the top, but um, and you can also change the channel on the drone. There's a little button on the side, right behind the eye that says channel. There's also a bind button underneath the shark fin. So. Now that we've got the crash testing, all that stuff done, we got to prove to the point where you can kind of get up and rolling and running it into stuff. And definitely running it into stuff. Yeah, definitely running into stuff. And I mean, it took the crashes really well. I think we lost one, two propellers in total. So 
definitely when you get this, if you get this, buy spare propellers because you will need a ton of them. I think we've got the point down that it's not terribly difficult to get up and running. So now I'm gonna show you guys some flight footage of me just flying it around the apartment. So as you guys can see, this thing flies uh, pretty well for a little brushed micro drone. The beginner rates are really low, so if you get going too fast, it's really hard to turn without running into stuff. You can change your rates though in the beta flight configurator, plug in the little USB port here, change everything to whatever your heart desires. The rate mode, which is the middle and bottom switch position on the left auxiliary switch, they're really hard to fly indoors, but outdoors it's a lot easier and you get going pretty fast with this guy. The only really annoying part that I noticed was that if you crash pretty hard, the accelerometer will reset. Sometimes it'll reset improperly and so you'll have a weird like drift, so you have to unplug the battery and plug it back in. And if it doesn't reset at all, you also have to unplug the battery plug it back in again and let it reset while sitting still. Changing channels and binding is super easy. There's a button for that on the side. You can upgrade your goggles from this thing. You can go from the standard box goggles. You can upgrade to the higher end Fat Shark goggles if you want later on down the line. And since this transmitter uses the FlySky protocol, so if you do want to get a larger drone or a brushless drone or whatever, anything with a FlySky receiver in it uh, can be bound to this radio and flown with it. And the radio honestly is not bad. Like most starter drones come with like a toy radio, which is, you know, just super cheap, really tiny, and never really feels right. Uh, this is probably one of, if not the highest quality radios that comes with it. It just takes four AA batteries and then you're good to go. And also the radio has a USB port on the bottom that you can use to plug in your computer and you can use this for any simulators you want to do. So I would definitely suggest before you start railing this guy around at Mach 7, or especially upgrading to a brushless drone, plug this guy into the computer, get a simulator, Velocity drone, DRL simulator, lift off, whatever your heart desires, and play around the sim, because you will, you will save a lot of money on parts and crashing by learning how to do stuff in the sim before you actually break stuff in real life. Overall, if you are just getting an FPV, you have no idea how to get in, you just want to get something to get in the air, and you want to one click, get it to your doorstep, plug it in, and everything be ready to go. This is a very good kit for that. Overall, this kit is pretty good if you just want to get something and get it in, have everything already bound, ready to fly right out of the box, especially if you're just learning to fly. Super robust, really easy. You can fly this guy indoors, which is super nice. Our apartment is pretty tiny, as you guys saw, so it's kind of hard to control this guy in something as tiny as this area. But something like a larger house or whatever would be totally fine to rip this guy around. Outdoor flying, as long as there's like no winds, um, you can rip this guy around, nice and easy. If it starts to get a little windy of any sort, this guy probably is going to struggle though. Hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. There'll be a link in the description below where to get this guy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll see you guys next time.